This is going to be your guide for rare islands in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now the first thing we need to do is visit some islands, and you can do that by buying Nook Miles tickets for 2,000 Nook Miles. You learn about this through normal gameplay, but it's a really significant part of this because it's the only way to visit an island, and some of the islands we're going to be going for are incredibly rare, so you're going to need to find a way of getting a lot of Nook Miles. Effectively just completing tasks works, works really well, and then paying attention to your repeatable tasks because you can just get a lot of nook miles that way such as five times 150 nook miles just for depositing five fruits i did that and that's almost half a ticket if i decide to sell another 2500 bells worth of items hand in some fossils yeah the tickets start paying off for themselves really quick but you can't do like an infinite amount of them it's not just like instantly repeatable but it's not really too difficult so you can't just only target islands you need to go around do some tasks collect some miles that way and then when you have a massive stockpile that's when you can go on a big old island hunt so let's go and see what my first island is going to be all right and my first island is spiral island so this is a common island you've probably run into if you've done any kind of island searching and there really isn't anything exceptional about it you go through the spiral little pattern and then in the center there's either a rock or sometimes a fossil but fossils aren't really like super insane and the rock doesn't give you bells or anything else even if you break it you just get like stone so it's just a common island that doesn't really have too much going on my next island is Pond Island. You can tell because there's a little pond on the right side and then a cliff that kind of breaks up the terrain, and that's kind of it. A lot of trees, some of your native fruit, a couple of rocks, and it's just an island. So that's kind of the big thing to note. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are the tools that you need to bring to prepare yourself. You could bring a metal axe and shovel. I like doing that. That way I can go straight to the mining and woodcutting if I need something like a vaulting pole or if I want to build a ladder and then get up to the higher terrain on the islands. But you don't even need to bring that. You can just bring nothing and then harvest branches. So yeah, shake a tree, get some branches. Branches build a fishing pole as well as a butterfly net or just a bug catching net. And then there's going to be rocks and the rocks have stones around them. So you can use that to build an axe. There's a lot of trees that gives you a lot of wood. So it looks like the game has kind of just set you up to get all the tools that you need. And worst case scenario, if you have a hundred miles, you can buy various tools from Wilbur here. So let's go and check out what he has and how much it costs. Like it, it kind of sucks if you're already doing, you know, 2000 miles to get to the island. You don't want to sp spend really any extra, but if you're desperate, there you go. Like you can just spend a hundred, get a shovel, get some iron, upgrade your tools. So it's not going to be super difficult, but it also kind of like sets up what you want to do. So now that I have a shovel or now that I craft a shovel, could mine this, get some iron, use the five tree branches for a fishing pole, and then you can go fishing at Pond Island, which has some nice fish for you to catch. Nice, and it looks like I got Fruit Tree Island. So you might be wondering like, well, what if I don't have friends or Nintendo Online? How am I supposed to get other fruits in the game beside my native fruits? That's by getting a random chance at getting a Fruit Island. So normally I have cherries, as you could have seen from like the other islands I was at, but this one has peaches. Now this is the second time I've gotten Peach Island, but also no other fruits. So it seems like that every person or every like save file has a main fruit and a secondary fruit, and then that secondary fruit becomes more common on Fruit Island. There's still a very, very rare chance that if you roll for Fruit Island, you can get one of the other fruits. So this could have been apples or oranges or pears. It's just a lot more rare that way, and also does give you a different type of flower. I normally have tulips on my island, but this one has roses. And then the layout, it's something like this. You know, you just, you just, you pop up into it, and then you immediately see different fruits. So go get them. And then we have just a standard island. So there's going to be a waterfall in the center with a little bit of a hill, and everything else is pretty much going to be like your native island. So if you see this, just re-roll for it, unless you want to chop down all the trees and harvest some wood and not worry about the resources that way. Always good to just do a little bit of extra mining if you need those resources. But other than that, this one's pretty much a wash. And then we have Bamboo Island. So Bamboo Island is a completely flat island filled with trees. Sometimes you can get a Pine Island. Like I've gotten Bamboo Island five times, but I've gotten Pine Island once, and I haven't seen anyone talk about Pine Island. 
Now, I didn't try fishing there, so maybe Pi Pine Island has like some rare fish I missed or something. Either way, Bamboo Island is going to be a necessity for getting bamboo. And bamboo is a different type of wood, so it's also going to be used for different kinds of crafting recipes. And if you want to get more bamboo, bring it over to your island. All you have to do is dig up these little spots next to the tree, and then you can get yourself some bamboo shoots. Now, if you plant this, the bamboo tree grows up, and then it drops more shoots by it. So you can just get tons and tons of bamboo that way. So yeah, it's a pretty necessary island, and it doesn't seem to be too rare, but it's also not super common at the same time. So yeah, to get an idea of how rare these rare islands are, I just spent all of my Nook Miles and I didn't get a rare island. Now I've been to about 30 islands in total, and I've gotten the Bells Island once, and the Hybrid Flower Island once. So either I was really lucky in the beginning, or I've been really unlucky now. So there might be like a 5% chance that you get to roll for one of the rare islands, or the rare islands are like 1-3% to chance of each of them spawning or something like that. Either way, it's pretty rare. You might get lucky, you might get unlucky, but fortunately, people on the internet, they've already stumbled into these islands, and they've already broken these islands. So the first one we're going to talk about is Tarantula Island, or Scorpion Island. So there's going to be a little bit of a moat, with a big island in the center, and then at night, tarantulas and scorpions can spawn here. So it depends on the time of year. That if you're playing from May through October in the Northern Hemisphere, that's going to be scorpions, and if you're playing from November through April, that is going to be tarantulas, and this turns out to be one of the most profitable islands in the game. So what you want to do is get a tarantula or scorpion following you, and then you build like a little spiral maze for it, so it gets stuck in there, you dig a hole, you trap it in there, and this is going to de-aggro all of the other tarantulas and scorpions. So yeah, he just like misclicked right there, but then you fill that in, and now you're good to go. So once you do that on the main island, because multiple tarantulas and scorpions can spawn, all of the other ones are not aggressive, so you can just go pick them up, farm them super easily, and then this becomes an insane amount of money. Now you do want to have your game time set past 7 p.m., because if not, then you're just going to have to wait until it becomes nighttime, and you can't leave the island. So if you like try to change the time, it, it just won't let you. So yeah, it says, ready to wrap things up for now. Next time you start the game, you'll begin from your home. So if you try to time travel, you'll just leave the island, which is not what you want to do. So you want to be playing at night, that way if you do get the Tarantula or Scorpion Island, you can immediately make use of it. Now the next rare island is Money Island, and it's just going to be a giant lake with a little island in the center that has some rocks on it. Now the only way you can access this is by going to the north part of the island, breaking the rock, so you will need to like eat a fruit on the island or something. So you break the rock, there's going to be a money bag over it, and then you have to pull vault onto the main island where it's five money rocks. So the general money rock trick to where if you mine all of them as fast as possible, you end up getting 15,000 bells, well multiply that by 5, and then you can get 75,000 bells plus the 5,000 bells from entering at the top of the island. So this is going to be pretty crazy. If you see these little rocks, you will have to like work to get it. It does take like a little bit of extra work because you need to break a rock as well as pull vault over, but it's pretty worth it. It's not the most profitable island, but still pretty exciting when every rock you hit just rains money. And then we have a counterpart to Tarantula Island, Shark Island, which seems to be a lot more profitable. That Tarantula Island gives you about 400,000 bells, but if you load up on an inventory of shark, you can get over 500,000 bells. That is pretty insane, because in the ocean, you only get shark or suckerfish. So Suckerfish is going to be good if you want to finish off your museum or get all of the shark types for your museum as well, and then you just sell everything else and get an insane amount of money. Now the way that you can identify this island is because there's like a dorsal fin looking island formation inside of the main lake. And that's also why this video is so valuable, because you might have gone here, but if you didn't go fishing, it might look unusual, it might look weird, but unless you go fishing and then you start catching non-stop sharks, you wouldn't know that this is a rare island that is very special. Now the reports are that this island is only available in the summer months, so May through October according to the game. Now I don't know if that is 100% the case, but it took a few days for people to find out that this island is a thing, and a lot of people are shocked that it even exists. So until you hear otherwise, try to do your island searching in the May through October months, that way you increase your chances of getting the Shark Island. So that's it for Shark Island, but there's also a big fish island as well, and it looks like this. Now, I might 
have gotten this island and not really known about it, but the only fish that spawn in that lake are big fish, and this might be the counterpart to Shark, Shark Island. You have really good pond fish spawning in this one, and that's going to be the November through April months right there. So I might have gotten that, might have missed it, but once again, that's why you, it's good to know the layouts of the islands. And then lastly for the islands, we have Rare Flower Island, and we also have Hybrid Flower Island. So there's just going to be a big lake in the center, and I wish I knew about this earlier, but apparently you can catch koi fish here. I haven't caught a koi fish yet, so that would have been good to know. I just harvested some of the flowers and took off. So it's also good knowing what is possible with these rare islands, but you can get one that has hybrid flowers and a, ch and a high chance at spawning emperor butterflies, or you can also get one that just has non-native flower types, so there'll be rare flowers for you. So that is going to be the Rare Island Guide for Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you enjoyed the video or if it helped you in any way, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends. As I showed in the video, it's pretty important to know what's going on with the Rare Islands and you can get some pretty cool stuff from them. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.